Hey guys, this is Mr. Myasis here, and today I want to talk with you about doing a, a hypothesis test for uh, means, so a one sample hypothesis test for means, and a confidence interval. Now, I did a video before about uh, doing a confidence interval for one sample mean, but what I didn't do, and I did it by hand and I used a table, and I promised you that I'd make a video, that I'd do a hypothesis test, and I would show you how to do it on the TI Inspire. So, we're going to go to my computer over here and uh, we're going to take a look at that okay so let's take a look at my computer so here we are with my computer and here's a problem that we're going to be doing a uh, coffee machine dispenses coffee into paper paper cups you're supposed to get 10 ounces of coffee but the amount varies slightly from cup to cup here are my, here are the amounts measured in random sample of 20 cups find the 95 percent confidence interval for the mean fluid ounces of dispensed coffee and is there evidence is there evidence that means do a hypothesis test right is there evidence that the machine is short-changing customers? Short-changing meaning they are getting less coffee than they are supposed to, or at least than the, than the uh, machine says they're supposed to. So here's what we're gonna do. We need to throw this data. Now, normally you might not get actual data, you might just get the statistics, um, but we're gonna need to throw this data into a spreadsheet and figure out the statistics for this. So we'll go to in our calculator, and I'll enter it into a list here. Coffee, I entered in the data. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do my one variable stats. So menu, statistics, stat calculations, one variable statistics. And this will give me my statistics that I need. All right, so I have an X bar of 9.845. So I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna go ahead and write that down. Uh, my X bar is 9.845. And what else do I need? Well, I'm gonna need my sample standard deviation. So my sample standard deviation is S. So let's go and see what that is. S is gonna be 0.1986. So I'm just gonna go and say 0 0.20. Uh, actually, we'll, we'll go 0 0.199. Let's go 0.199. So my sample standard deviation is uh, 0 0.199, 0 0.199. Let's go put that there. And then what we're also going to need is our n. Well, we know our n is 20 because there are 20 things here. So um, we got we have some important statistics that we have here, and we're going to compare it to our uh, null hypothesis. So let's take a look at what our null hypothesis is. We're running a hypothesis test here to see if there is evidence um, that the machine is shortchanging customers. So what I'll do is I'll run through the first pieces of the hypothesis test, and then we'll look at, at doing the confidence interval and doing the hypothesis test in our calculator, and then using the uh, confidence interval and the p-value to make a conclusion about our hypothesis. So let's start first with our hypothesis. So our null hypothesis here, now for means, we're comparing it to the population mean, right? What are we supposed to be getting? So we're gonna say that's mu. Mu should be equal to 10 ounces, right? That's what we should be getting, but we wanna know if it's not. The alternative hypothesis would be that mu is less than 10, right? We wanna know if it's shortchanging the customers and giving it less coffee than it's supposed to be doing. So these are, this is our, our null hypothesis and our alternative hypothesis, okay? So um, the reason we, uh, okay, let's keep, just keep going on. Let's take a look at our model. Okay, this is our hypothesis. Our model is the next thing we wanna do. And, nor, and we know from the last video I did for a uh, one sample means, we're gonna use a T distribution, but we gotta do the assumptions and conditions. So let's go ahead and write these assumptions and conditions down. All right, so what's our first assumption and condition? It is randomization, right? So we're gonna write that out. We are going to take a random sample of 20 cups of coffee. All right, what's our second one? Well, our second one is less than 10%, so we're gonna say that, um, you know, 20 cups is less than 
of all cups dispensed, right? All cups of coffee dispensed. And then the third one, the third one is going to be nearly normal condition. So we want to see is, remember that our, that our data for our sample need to be unimodal and symmetric. So we're going to write down nearly normal. And then we're going to say our sample distribution is unimodal and in this case fairly symmetric now what do i do to show this i can't just say it um now if it's in if it's in the the problem and it says the distribution of the sample is going to be unimodal and symmetric then we can just say it because it says in the problem but if it gives us the if it gives us the the data then we're going to need to show that it's unimodal and symmetric so how are we going to do that we are going to draw a histogram so I've already done the histogram in my in my calculator. Um, it's right here. Okay, this is my histogram. So all I'm going to do in this case to speed up the process. Now, normally I would draw this, but I'm just going to go ahead and cut cut and paste this into my document here. Um, so that way we can kind of speed speed this up. All right. So here's my histogram. You got to show the histogram, and you can see that my histogram is uh, fairly, you know, like I said, fairly unimodal and symmetric. You know, I do that. Okay, it's close enough. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? Nothing in statistics ever does. It just has to be close. All right, so now that we know that we're going to use, we will use a T model with how many degrees of freedom? With nine degrees of freedom, because remember the degrees of freedom is n minus one. So degrees of freedom is always the sample size minus one. So with nine degrees of freedom, we're going to use a T model. So let's go ahead and do our mechanics here. Oops. All right, so let's first do our confidence interval. Our confidence interval, remember from the last video, is x bar plus or minus t star with, oops, with nine degrees of freedom multiplied by sigma over the square root of, oh, not sigma, we don't. In our confidence interval, we don't know sigma, right? S over square root n. So we can uh, plug all our values in. We have x bar here, we have s, we have um, n for 20. What we would need to know is the uh, t star for 95% confidence interval for nine degrees of freedom. And I showed you how to do that on the textbook using the uh, tables. So let's take a look at how, we, how are we gonna compute this using our uh, TI Inspire. So let's go and take a look at our TI Inspire. We're gonna go to, let me get a calculator menu here. And we're gonna go to menu, statistics, confidence intervals, and we want a T interval, because we're using a T distribution, right? So we're using a T interval. So we're gonna do a T interval, data input, we actually have the data, so we're going to go and put the data, but if we clicked on this and we only have the stats, we would enter in the stats. Okay, so it's our data. What is our list? We are using our coffee list, um, and we want a 95% confidence level. So we're just going to hit OK, and it's going to give us our confidence interval. Notice here our upper is 9.75, and our, I'm sorry, our lower is 9.75, and our upper is 9.94. So let's go and write that, 9.75 and 9.94. So we got a confidence interval of 9.75 to 9.94. All right, this is our confidence interval. And a little later, I'm going to write down our conclusion with our confidence interval in it. So I'll do this in context. Let's take a look at our, um, our hypothesis test now. We're going to go and run our mechanics for our hypothesis test. You, you don't normally... All, you don't have to find the confidence interval if you're doing a hypothesis test. It's just in this example that I'm doing, I'm doing both so we can see both of them, okay? So this is what you would do for your for your confidence interval. We have a T distribution. It looks kind of like this, right? Nine degrees of freedom. It looks a lot like the normal model, okay? Um, this time, our T for nine degrees of freedom, I'm sorry, did I say nine? It should be 19, 19, 
19. I was assuming, I thought we had 10. We have not, we have 20, right? 19 degrees of freedom. So uh, our T for 19 degrees of freedom, this is what we do. We do the T um, a lot like we did the, well, here's what we're going to do. I'm just going to show you what we're going to do, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to run this test in our calculator, and then we're going to put down on our paper uh, some information the calculator gives us, okay? It's the easiest to run it because uh, to do these T's, we can look at the table for uh, a T value for 19 degrees of freedom. Um, but, but, you know, it gets a little complicated. So let's use the calculator here. So we're going to go to menu, statistics, stat tests, T test. We've got data. Our, our uh, null... Our null hypothesis is that mu is equal to 10, okay? Our list is our coffee. And then our alternative hypothesis was that we are less than 10, right? That's why we use a less. We'd okay, and this gives us all our information. So our T value is negative 3.49. So I'm gonna go and put that in my, I'm gonna say T equals negative 3.49. I'm gonna put that here somewhere. Okay, negative 3.49. And I'm looking for everything less than that. All right. So I'm going to write P, the probability that T with 19 degrees of freedom is less than negative 3.49, right? This is what I'm looking for. The probability, which is my P value, is going to be equal to, let's go back to my calculator. The P value is 0 0.001225. So 0 0.0012. All right, and there are my mechanics. I can also, if I really wanted to, I can write down the formula for T, which is X bar minus mu. Nope, that's wrong. It's mu minus X bar. Okay, it's mu minus X bar all over sigma over the square root of N, which if you, if you see that, that looks a lot, that looks really familiar. It looks like the Z score for, um, for a normal model for a um, sampling distribution of means. And it is, except remember on the last video I talked about, we can only use the normal model for a sample, sampling distribution of means if our samples ha sample size is large enough. Um, if not, we have to use a T distribution. So normally we're gonna use a T distribution in our, um, in, our, uh, in, our, in our hypothesis test for means. All right, so now that we have that, we're gonna go and do our conclusion. Okay, so we got all this stuff. Let's go and do our conclusion. And what I'll do here is I will do the conclusion for both the confidence interval and then also using my p-value for the hypothesis test, okay? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put in, um, put some text in because it's a little easier for me to do this typing it out. This is a sign here. Okay, so what's our conclusion? Let's talk about the confidence interval first, all right? So we are 95% confident that the true, that the average, no, let's say, the true mean ounces of coffee dispensed by the machine is between 9.75 and 9.93 ounces. All right, so that's the confidence interval. Let's talk about the p-value. And this would be our conclusion for our hypothesis test. All right, since the p-value is low, which is, and we said it was 0 0.0012, and that's definitely um, low, which is also, you know, which is less than the alpha of 0 0.05, we would reject the null hypothesis. There is enough evidence to suggest that the coffee machine uh, um, 
is short changing customers. All right, that would be it. And we can also say, we could, if we really wanted to, we can also say that since the, um, since the, the uh, null hypothesis was not in our confidence interval, that it, you know, we can uh, reject the null hypothesis, which is saying that there is evidence to show that it's not working. Okay, so um, that's it. That's a hypothesis and a confidence interval. I am running out of time on my computer. So catch you next time. That's it, folks. Bye-bye.